Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included here in the Ultimate Base 4.0. In the previous episode, I think, oh, we actually took care of the Gold Volcano. No, wait, I'm getting confused. Sometimes I'm two episodes ahead of the comments, so I literally forgot if we did this in the previous episode. Either way, today I would like to do the very same thing with the Cobalt Volcano, however, with a slightly different idea from the comment section. I think this might actually just work out for the Cobalt Volcano. And so I think I'm gonna plan this out right away. Currently this guy is idle. I would like to surround this with ceramic and I would like to make it, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, let's do eight tiles or so. And I'm also gonna make this four high, a standard room size. Now this looks slightly off, but it's just because of this neutronium tile. Anyways, another thing I would like to see is an auto sweeper. This one here doesn't need to be built out of steel because I'm gonna do it differently by actually filling up the entirety of the room with a liquid. No wait, thinking of it, this is gonna overpressure the cobalt volcano. Okay, it looks like 150 kilograms of pressure is gonna overpressure the volcano. That means if we get more than 150 kilograms of steam per tile, it would not be allowed to erupt. I have a little bit more than 300 kilograms in here, so this should add up divided by four, but we cannot do the same thing here. So I think what I'm gonna do is just utilize the bottom row in order to cool the entirety of the metal down. That means we don't need to make it this large, we just need to encase it. Then the auto sweeper could, for instance, go right here and the conveyor loader at the bottom. I just need to make sure that all the machinery is also touching the ground floor Otherwise, we will not be sufficiently cooling it down. Unless we also fill it up with a little bit of hydrogen. That is a possibility. You know, I actually really like that idea. We could just set up a high gas pressure vent, let's say right here. And then we just pump down a little bit of hydrogen. Let's maybe do it from here. Bring this all the way down into there. You know what? I'm gonna swap these two guys here. So the auto sweeper is on this place right there. Conveyor loader here and then the high gas pressure vent there. This is gonna allow me to set up some conveyor rails. We can only initially cool down on this layer. And now you gave me a really good tip I totally forgot about and that is the wolframite material. If we check this out right here, the melting point is 2900 degrees. So an extra 500 from the steel. Now, now, if we filled the rest up with hydrogen gases, then we would be going just through the room in order to cool it down. And then we do something similar for the last phase of cooling. And that is a bunch of aluminium tiles here. Just three though. Hmm. Maybe we make it four high still. This would allow me to wiggle back one more time and then do it on the other side. That makes a little bit more sense. And then I'm gonna switch to aluminium or for the rails right here. Actually, did I do it here? The rails should be aluminium. Yeah. I need to exchange those. Also, some people have been worried about this heavy conductive joint plate because, it, of course, it can transfer the heat outside. But this is going to be a shaft here with a power cable that is completely free of gases, so it will not matter. Either way, this is now not going to be a steam room, but a room that we actively keep cool. And we're going to do that with a cooling loop, some aluminium pipes right here. And yeah, I guess we can just go ahead and follow the pattern there. So I kind of want to do it from the right side. So I'm going to wiggle the other way around. Ooh, let's not break the tile just yet. And then at the bottom here, I would like to set up a steam room that is capable of cooling down all of the volcanoes. So I'm going to make it somewhat expandable. First of all, we need to get rid of these. Maybe not all of them. But say we have a three high steam turbine room. And then we do something like this. This would be the end of the room. Oh, we don't have materials. Wait. Oh no, I forgot to keep crafting the ceramic. That is a slight mistake. Let me add another one of these. Also, I exchanged the bunker door here with two mechanized airlocks and then we also have to make sure this is actually closed off. So all of the eggs that actually land here are not influencing the fish and therefore the fish will breed infinitely. Another thing that confused me was this Paku here. As soon as it is no longer alone, it is actually already overcrowded and I'm curious. Is it because it is water and not polluted water? Because usually I only see natural fish in polluted water. It might have been a mistake to use normal water. Even two Paku are already overcrowding this room. Either way, I'm gonna leave this space for about two steam turbines right now. And then let's see, only these guys need to be ceramic. This doesn't need to be ceramic anymore. So I can switch to... hmm igneous rock probably. You know, thinking about it, since this room is going to be a cold room, none of these tiles really need to be ceramic. However, the tiles here at the bottom, I want to make ceramic because there's going to be the steam room below and the fewer heat exchange, the better, of course. The steam room, I think I'm going to make 
three high, like so. And we're probably just going to get started with a single aqua tuner and then we'll see. By the way, this compost by now reached 522 degrees. I'm proud of it. Also, I'm still struggling here with the gas distribution. It just doesn't work. Even though it pushes it up, the way oxygen not included works, these gases here, the oxygen, just attempts to go beneath the hydrogen. And it's just so weird. So one way I figured we might be able to fix this is if we moved all of these farms one tile down, then the oxygen could be trapped inside the farm and the rest of the room could just be hydrogen. I mean, honestly, the entire room could just be hydrogen in this case. At least if we manage to trap some oxygen here. This also means the room would get bigger, but we also don't really have the amount of farms that we want. Also, as soon as we get the glossy Dracos, we can change to a different plant that doesn't require oxygen. But it will require a different gas, so we could just go ahead and exchange it. Let me Google how many plants are necessary per Draco. Each Draco needs three to four mealwood plants to not starve. Some research suggests glossy Dracos require a one-to-one -one ratio, so eight plants. Let me see, that's uh, not eight, that's seven. Crap, we could put the eighth right here. Okay, that might make sense. If we push it all down, that would be eight plants. This would bring all these plants down and catch a layer of oxygen here at the bottom. Then I think I would be exchanging these tiles still. No, wait, that doesn't add up. Let me move this critter drop off point uh, to over here. Is that even possible? No, it's not. Let's put it there. Okay, now the stable is officially too large. We will have to make it smaller, but this will make things look even better if we, for instance, did something like that. By the way, looking at the Paku, the wildness went down to 71%. It's uh, bound to lose about 15 to 20% per cycle. And then whenever it lays an egg, the offspring will remember the taming status. So we can just continue as of this point. Even if we don't tame this first Paku, we will be doing it with the next one. And if we check the Draco here, the glossy dracolet egg chance already went up to 13% because it ate mealwood. So I'm not even sure it's going to be worth it to do the oxygen experiment. We might just go ahead, exchange all of this chamber with hydrogen and then add just a tiny bit of chlorine for the bomb lilies that we need for the glossy dracos. As a matter of fact, we might be able to just find that out. Glossy draco, what do you eat? Mealwood or bristle blossoms? Oh, okay. I might be wrong. Oh, crap. Bristle blossoms would be horrible. Can we just keep feeding them meal lice? The diet of glossy dracos has been altered. They now consume pinch up pepper plants and meal wood plants. Are you serious? Okay, wait. Is dirt gonna be sustainable? How do we produce dirt? We will then have to find a way to replenish that. You know, I wonder, could we rotate these around and plant some pinch up pepper and all they require is 150 grams of air pressure? Like we could have the entirety of the room being hydrogen and it wouldn't matter. Matter, right? But it does require 35 kilograms of polluted water every day. That is a lot. And it also takes a kilogram of phosphoride per site. Well, that's not a lot. Ah, the temperature could be an issue. 35 degrees is not the temperature I would like to see in here. Yeah, in this case, I think I might just go with the original plan, but we keep that in mind that we could switch the design to accommodate the pinch of peppers. But let's do this one here first with uh, meal ice in this case. So we just plant that, but we also should disable auto harvest. Like we do not want to harvest any of these plants. Let's get rid of these for now. I don't think this guy is starving. Yeah, happy and tame. Now we can go ahead and plant all of these again. This doesn't count as a stable anymore. How large is the room? Let's check. Room size 100 tiles. That means we are four tiles too large. If we moved all of this one block over, I think we could just take away four more tiles. Problem solved. Now with the machinery, this doesn't really look good. I wanted to have it centralized so the Dracos don't take too long to actually get to the stations. But then we have this huge cable and I think I'm just going to continue with this one. We have 840 watts on this one so we could easily add the shearing station as well. I'm going to add that like so and then we get rid of the original ones. And all I have to do is bring up the cabling and power the shearing station. This allows me to get rid of all of this also, some of the concerns I want to get away with is the cabling here. Heavy watt cabling. A lot of people are just wanting me to use transformers everywhere, but I really don't like that. And the argument people are using is the decor value. Oh my god, look at that! We were losing... Wait, this is not there! 
Oh my gosh, we were losing pressure all the time here. Uh, solid charcoal. This needs to be done like immediately. Anyways, what I wanted to show you is the decor value right here. So if we check this out, total decor 49.5. So it's still a positive decor. And then even right here where we have all of this cabling, if there comes decor from all sides like this, we have 120 maximum decor. There's no more decor that I could gain from here. And then even checking out here, it's 120 nine right at the tile where the cable goes through and there's even an ugly atmo suit and everything so decor is really not going to be an issue the only thing i want to avoid is that the duplicates are running around the cables the entire time so i would like to bring the cable over to the left side somewhere and then the duplicates running around will not have this very negative effect of minus 409 or so transformers i think make it unnecessarily complicated and it doesn't help with the cable spaghetti okay now i kind of gotta make sure we close this off now that i have this full of oxygen and if i put this to a high priority just this tile then we should be able to trap the oxygen and then the rest of the oxygen should behave as previously that means the hydrogen is going to be pushed down here again and then this entire layer here wherever the dracos are they can grow their scales there it is and this is just perfect now i can lower the pressure of the room so we don't have what almost three kilograms here and before i forget the zabel harvest that's just for the Dracos. We can lower the pressure a little bit by opening up this tile here, for instance. Mm, yeah, this is just going to push out the oxygen. And that also means I probably don't want any new oxygen to be in here. So we can uh, deconstruct this. And there it is. Okay, wonderful. It should now be flowing out gradually. Oh, I just love how the gases are moving. This has fascinated me from the very start of this game. Now, I think to make this look even better, I'm gonna complete this layer. And what I would like to see is the flickering of the gases go down to this layer right here. We can accomplish it. Whoa, it's a battle of the gases here. That's kind of incredible. But I think overall it's working. We're now down to two kilograms per tile. That allows the hydrogen to hopefully push down a little bit more. Because essentially the hydrogen should stay the same while we get rid of a little bit of oxygen. But this sneaky hydrogen here is kind of acting like a barrier as well. So we are only getting rid of it slowly. But I think this is the perfect solution to our meal wood problem. And if we can just keep these plants, then why not? It's just like 10 kilograms of dirt per cycle. Let's round it up to 100 kilograms for all the plants. That means in 10 cycles, I use one ton of dirt. We need to be able to replenish that over time. Oh, very nice. Okay, this is now looking promising. It is coming down more and more and the flickering is happening here. So what I'm going to do is close off this hole again and wait for the gases to settle a little bit. But it does look very promising. So this seems to be working. Even though it's kind of an unconventional design, maybe we are going to wrap it up like so, so that we can have a clean room at the bottom. But yeah, this actually has been amazing. I mean, we don't even care about the layer here on the top because Dracos are never going to be there. So just here, they're not going to grow their scales. I like it. And now it's time to take care of the volcano contraption here. I'm just going to do this quite quickly. Like one more thing I want to add is a liquid vent. I'm going to do that here. And that also means I want to avoid this part here with my radiant pipes. We're just going to go through like so and so. And then here I still have the space in order to add a little bit of water if I want to. And I think I'm just going to be all fancy and set up a switch for this. Now before I forget some drywall for this one as well. Except for the two tiles here in the center volcano in the meantime let's check this guy uh gold yeah that's all good and it's all steam now that's very good 97 kilograms i like that number that means we can now probably re-enable the auto sweeper and let's just observe this right now it's still at a hundred degrees so the same temperature as the room it's in let's see how much we can get it down right here it should hopefully be around the same temperature uh-huh there we go this is 40 degrees perfect now can we keep up is the question well maybe with gold it's going to be easy but it's also going to be easy either way since we're only cooling down low quantities very good we already have 30 tons of gold by the way which is absolutely amazing so maybe we should also make gold tiles as a background somewhere also when it comes to steam turbines let's set it up mm, i'm gonna go with cobalt here and we're gonna do one here and another one would go there that knee bed is singing uh, this is amazing 
I love it. By the way, second steam turbine goes here. Let's maybe mirror the design so we can combine the output. Uh, actually, that's not really convenient, is it? It's not going to be symmetrical. <laughs> Yeah, let's forget about that. I'm going to put it into this direction. So at least we have one flow and we will be going like so and so down into a chute. My Paku, by the way, is now at 14% or 13% wildness, which means we can still tame it in its lifespan. And then it will lay an egg like every cycle or so and we can breed it. All going to be good. Okay, I think I'm going to make a similar access point here in this contraption. And that means we can close this off and maybe set up this aluminium tile, get this done. This one here will actually not matter at all because it's not a hot room. Well, it's not going to be hot if everything goes according to plan. Hold the phone. I need heavy watt conductive wire. Let's add that right here. Power these guys up. Then right here at the bottom, I would be having one or potentially more than one aqua tuner. Now, considering I have two steam engines and one engine can easily cool down an aqua tuner i think i'm gonna put in two right off the bat i mean this cooling loop is going to be utilized to cool down all of the volcanoes we need at least two steam engines and at least two aqua tuners in the end so why not put them in right off the bat i'm gonna distribute them a little bit so that i can set up a fancy system that will cool down the liquids exactly the way i want so we would be installing a liquid pipe thermo center in front of both aqua tuners together with some automation wire then I'm gonna do the first aqua tuner like I did the other one so we can either go through or we bypass it if the liquid is already cold enough then all I have to make sure is that we go out with a bridge here and then combine the two outputs together and then we can continue into the next one and do the very same thing bypass here but then do that and that and I honestly it would also be great to get into a liquid reservoir first we could add a liquid reservoir are here on the side and then maybe leave some space free for transformers though i'm not so sure if i'm gonna need them here it would have been more elegant to have the liquid reservoir on the top if i push this back two more blocks this would actually be possible so uh, all of this can go and instead i'm gonna be adding the second one here this is gonna allow me to push the steam turbines over as well no that's stupid that doesn't help me at all so yeah instead i think i'm gonna hop over here and then get up into a liquid reservoir let me see that should be the correct placement let's get that made out of iron mm, yeah that's good and then this would be its own separate room with a liquid reservoir that means this this wall here doesn't need to be ceramic at all and this is also going to be enclosed. So now the cooled down coolant is going to go into the liquid storage and then we can basically begin our cooling loop and we would be beginning it right here of course going through the first volcano and after this point we would be moving on to the next volcano say this gold volcano at the bottom we would be moving over to this guy here potentially cooling down everything we need to. And so in the future, this cooling loop we set up here for the initial volcanoes we can get rid of. And then if necessary, we could still go ahead and expand this room theoretically. And you know, in anticipation for that, I think I want to change the design again. So this aqua tuner moves over a little bit. So I'm going to push more everything to the right side. And we can do, for instance, something like this and then do all of the shebang again. Good. And so if I ever want to expand on the cooling loop, maybe we want to eventually cool down everything thing in the base or a lot of it then we can just go ahead add more aqua tuners as well as steam turbines but yeah the way we're gonna power this is through a vacuum here we're gonna have this liquid reservoir in a vacuum and so instead of a tile here i would like to see a heavy watt conductive joint plate and possibly right here as well so it can just go through the room of vacuum and then of course we go ahead power up all the aqua tuners yeah, I really like that. And then we can get the power from this direction. For now, I'm just going to get a normal wire to connect these together and then maybe a ladder shaft. Another problem I can solve easily because of my stupidity is uh, the overcrowding here. And it actually happened because I have all of these eggs here. Oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. But now we can bring all of these eggs up ready to hatch. And this guy shouldn't feel cramped anymore as soon as these guys are beyond the door. Let's see that happen. Where is it? Yeah, right there. It's happy again. The first egg we got here from this Draco has been a normal egg. It is still going to live for over 100 cycles. And the reproduction rate of Glossy Draculid is already 24%. So I think I'm just going to cook up the Draculid egg. We do not need that technically. Except how many reap fibers do I have? 
51 units. At the moment, I do not harvest any more reed fibers, right? So I think what I'm going to do is allow this egg to hatch unless we have eight glossy dracos. We do not really profit from killing the normal dracos. Now I want to make a little liquid lock here in order to be able to pump out the room and also fill it up with water. Add a little temporary pump and then get the gases out of there. Oh, well, you look at that. We managed to tame the Paku here. So reproduction rate is now 67% per cycle. So every one and a half cycles will be getting a new Paku fry egg. There's my liquid lock, so the gas pump should already be utilized. Well, I have to finish the power cable. Wonderful. The pump is going for it. This is going to be empty in no time. Hmm. Maybe I should have put back the tile here. Yeah, I'm going to build this with urgency and then mop up the liquid here. I don't want anything inside the liquid reservoir room. Okay, I think we're almost there. I'm pumping out the remainder of the gases. Let's also hook up the steam engines. And then I rerouted the cabling here slightly so it goes through the bottom. And then once that's done, I probably want to go ahead and analyze the volcano can we do that yet we might be able to do it yeah let's just release the vent here and fill this up with a little bit of water i want to do at least 900 or so kilograms so this entire tile here is full with a large heat capacity and then i think the way i'm going to do this is open up this tile here while allowing the hydrogen to actually fill the room and then push out the rest of the gases Oh, looks like we have some more meteor showers on the rise. Actually, it's not a dangerous one. Maybe something else I'm going to work on in the background is some conductive wire that just goes throughout the base and it will be responsible to power up all the contraptions that we have going on, including the fridge and everything. Looks like we have a little bit of an issue here with carbon dioxide being trapped. One way we can fix this is by replacing this with a tile very briefly. My cooling loop currently isn't really done yet. However, I'm still gonna wrap it up like so. We'll be coming in from this side in order to go through the aqua tuner again. So right now it's just gonna cool down this cobalt volcano and we'll be expanding on it when we need more. There, now I replaced the tile again with the ladder and we have all the water at the bottom at 500 kilograms currently. Also, before I forget, we're going to be using this aquatic mosaic pattern here for all of our industry. So all of this room needs to be tiled up as well. Ari is uh, currently starving. Okay, I did not realize. What about Lyra? Free up the solar panels. Maybe do the same thing here on the second planetoid. Yeah, grab all of this oxalite. And then, of course, we should send over some pickled meal. Probably not. Fried mushroom, 14,000 kilocalories. It's not really that much, but it's better than nothing. Fried mushroom, please somebody take that job. Uh, Ren, thank you. And there it is being shipped over. 3,000 grams. Is that really enough? Let's see. Yeah, now we have another 16 cycles to live. Okay, nice. We're almost there here at 900 kilograms. I'm now gonna stop this. We can add more if we figure out that we actually require more. But now I want to open up this tile here and close this one. And this should then theoretically allow us to add some hydrogen. But I do not like the way this is coming in. I would rather have it coming in from the top. Yeah, this is bad. This is also just going to be temporary for the time being, but I want to keep these in place in case I need to add more hydrogen later. One thing I actually forgot was to cool down the two steam turbines themselves, but that would be easily fixed with two conduction panels like so. We're going in and in like that. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare this pipe in order to transfer over the water into our cooling loop. Whoop, like so. And then, oh, holy cow. I totally forgot to analyze the volcano. Ah, oh, my bad, my bad. Now that means, ooh, we don't want to necessarily pump in the hydrogen. <laughs> the hydrogen we already have is actually fine because it's just going to remain here in the room. But then we need access to the room again, which is going to get rid of some hydrogen. Yeah, so now we're going to take the time to analyze the volcano. And if we get one or two eruptions in the meantime, it doesn't really matter because the water is still going to counteract it. Looks like we also achieved a vacuum. So this room can be closed off, remove the gas pump and everything we don't need anymore. And never mind about losing the hydrogen. It came from the top here either way. So we weren't really losing anything. Liquid reservoir now is in a vacuum. So there's not going to be any heat transfer here. And then whenever I get unreachable toilet in the comments, you suggested that I don't have enough power for my transit tube. So maybe there's only three spots for duplicants to actually access the transit tubes. And if I want six duplicants to be able to go back to the base at the same time, I would be adding another one of these. So that is a possibility and we will probably need to do the same thing here and move all the atmosphere suits over a little bit. 
Okay, it looks like we have the second Paku Fry in the joint. Now, this is still a wild egg. So I kind of want to kill this one off and wait for the egg that our tamed Paku laid. So whenever I get a new Paku, I'm just checking here. And I also changed the diet to meal wood seeds. By the way, everything is now prepared. I just need somebody to... Oh, it's unreachable. Wait, you can hop over here and there, can't you? Jean and May, you are here. It, it is totally reachable. There, Nisbet. Thank you. Wow. Ah, it was unreachable for Jean and May because they have the skill to actually analyze it. Okay, that makes sense. Now, Jean is tagging along, analyzing the volcano. It's going to take them about a cycle or two. So at least one eruption we will witness. Oh, by the way, and the reason I want hydrogen in here and not oxygen is because of the heat capacity. Let me see. Heat capacity of hydrogen is 2.4. That means it can store more heat or chill. And then if I check polluted oxygen or oxygen, it's only at one or so for the heat capacity. So you get a bit more cooling power just utilizing that. Um, yeah, looks good. I mean, the cobalt isn't gonna cool down very quickly. Wow, this is just going for it. It's not stopping. Like, the gold volcano stops much sooner, I think. Oh, uh, no, Gene. Oh, I was believing in you. You almost did it in one work cycle. Unreachable toilet for Ren. Now, this is really bad. So if it happens when they want to eat, they just go eat somewhere else, which is really bad. We definitely need another tube into the base. There it is, already fully researched. Let's now close this off again, and then we can add the rest of the hydrogen. And there it is, okay. Connecting the tube again. Hydrogen being pumped in. Um, yeah, that should be okay. I don't want any other gases though. But as soon as we get the hydrogen in there, everything else is going to be pushed towards the bottom and eventually it's just going to go out. Also, the gases have the tendency to move to the right, but left also works. In the end, I would like to see the full 20 kilograms this pressure gas vent is capable of delivering. And it looks like, oh, we're already getting some other gases. Yeah, now we're also pumping down some oxygen. But as long as we still get the hydrogen, everything should function the same. It's just going to take longer, probably. Hmm, I don't know. Hydrogen is already at 7 kilograms. That potentially means it's not working. Uh, though, looking at this, we can see the flow. So there is still oxygen being pushed out. So let's just have faith that this actually works. Mm, I might have to put the pump a little bit higher up there. Uh, there's now already the second eruption. It's still flowing out, as you can see. But dude, this is really resilient here. Oh, no, 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 no. Now it's flowing back in. How could you? Now it's flowing back out. What's even going on? We have 11 kilograms of hydrogen here and only 3 kilograms of oxygen. You know, if I can trap pure oxygen in this layer, I don't even mind as long as we still have the hydrogen with a higher capacity. But I certainly don't want also polluted oxygen. Oh, that just got deleted. And then there's the carbon dioxide. Go, 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 go out. Ooh. But what's just a little bit? Yeah, okay, okay, I think we are doing it. it. It just needs to go down. Okay, okay, now we are gonna close it. Is this really a good decision? Or am I just impatient, maybe? Because we were also introducing more oxygen with that. <sighs> Sometimes I just don't get this game. Well, it looks like it's decreasing still. Right now it is more or less stagnant. So let's maybe close this off now. This layer here will not have that much of a capacity, unfortunately. However, we'll have to observe whether or not we can do it. Right now, all of these guys are already kind of cooled down. Now we just need to be careful not to overheat the water. So the cooling loop we introduce very soon at the beginning of the next episode. And I just saw... <laughs> I totally forgot this pipe again. Now, let's build an insulated pipe here. Obsidian probably has a really high overheat temperature, right? 2700 degrees and it's coming out at what? Cobalt 2200. So this is not going to overheat this way. And then as for the conveyor rail, once again, Wolfermite is going to be my choice. That means I have to get back in here and I might get another chance at dumping the oxygen. So another idea I have is we could go ahead, replace these two tiles, and then I can replace this tile with an airflow tile as well, which is gonna push down the oxygen, theoretically, because that's an easier way to go down than horizontally. But this is not very elegant, is it? No, it's not. So I'm really not sure yet. Maybe I'm just still gonna pump out the room and then fill it up with a fresh batch of hydrogen. But for now, I'm pretty happy with the progress of this episode. Maybe let's clean up the rooms here a little bit. And then in the next episode, we can continue with the next project. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye bye.